All right, what's going on you guys? JT, PrecisionStriking.com. Now there are a lot of videos out there on how to gain punching power, what exercises to do, uh, how to rotate the body. But what I see with most beginners is that they're losing power. They actually have power leakages, not from anything related to the exercise, but just poor technique and poor fundamentals. If you have solid fundamentals, you'll be able to get a lot of power in your punches just through that alone and all the extra training that you're doing to add power will focus into your punch. But without these techniques, without these fundamentals, it doesn't matter how many exercises you do or what you're doing, all that power is just gonna go out the door. So in this video, I'm gonna break down four things, four ways that most beginners are losing power and what you can do to fix them. All right, number one, level hips and a good stance. Most beginners, even a lot of boxers, intermediates, they get into this sort of casual stance like this, right? Or just here, casual. Hips not really level. My hips are kind of slightly down from here. If I'm punching this way, right, and my hips are going that way, power is going down and power is going here. All the power isn't going into that punch. So I want level hips. One of the easiest ways to get level hips, lower your stance just by about an inch. Get some bend in your knees right here. Now you're working and looking like a boxer with good technique. Now here's the thing. It's easy to say that and you'll be good for one minute, but you got to train it so that in the sixth and seventh round, you can still be in that solid stance. So level hips in a good stance is not just something you know, it's something that you have to train for. So you have to build that into all your training, all your shadow boxing, all your bag work. You have to work from that level stance. Now here in my level stance, in my level hips, in my good stance, knees bent, weight centered, now I have amazing rotation. And now my hips and my upper body are working together as opposed to here, right, where I'm doing this, right, or if I'm trying to throw a hook, I can't even go because I'm off balance. Just small, it's very small, it's really only about an inch and change. Back, down, okay, and get used to being and working out of here and all that power, <laughs> everything is gonna come easier because your hips and upper body are working together. All right, number two, this is a huge one. We all wanna be on the balls of our feet. And that's important when we're moving and moving around and to be quick. But when you throw a power punch, you want that foot to set down. You want the opposite foot to set down. A lot of boxers have this sort of standing on stilts effect. So if I'm gonna throw the right hand, let's say I throw a jab right hand, one, okay, I'm laying on the ball of my foot. And as I throw that right hand, I want that foot to set down and be anchored into the ground. Here, boom like so, okay? What I don't want is to be on the balls of my feet and have this foot swivel out. Either here the heel swivels in or I land and the front of the foot swivels out. Once I do that, all the power is going out that way. I wanna keep this knee angle nice and solid. Set that foot down. Here, one, two. See, it locks. And that comes from being relaxed and sunk into your stance. If I'm up here like this, right? And I go and I go to punch or one, two. Sure, I may be quick, but that's not going to be power if I don't set that foot down and lock in this leg and lock in this whole front side of my body. So this side can turn, this locks. None of the power leaks out that way. It all is coming up here. Boom, right into my hand <clears throat> or whatever I'm throwing. Same thing goes off the hook. When I throw the hook, I want to set that rear heel down, right? If I want power, all right? Here, I don't want this. I don't want this swiveling. I don't want to be standing on stilts. I want to relax my feet, okay? Here, I throw the right hand. I set that rear heel down, boom. And then that locks and all the power is coming through the rotation. See here, I'll show you from this side. Here, okay? I don't want this. I don't want swiveling, okay? I don't want this where that foot stays up. I don't want this. I got no balance, okay? Relax your feet, set down. Here, I throw the right hand or whatever you do to set it up. I'm gonna set the heel down. <clears throat> and all the power is gonna come through that front side, rotating, because this is acting like an anchor point. None of the power is leaking out that way or leaking out in a spin or getting out in any way. Locking the feet down. Good balance, of course. Setting that feet down, rotating into the shot without moving or spinning out with the opposite foot. Number three, the knee angle. Now, when you go for the power shot, 
this whole front leg is acting like an anchor, okay, in the right hand. Or same thing with the lead hook. What I want is, if I want power, okay, because power isn't always the only thing you're going for, I want to fix that leg angle. I don't want my knee giving out or dipping. So if I'm going to throw the right hand, I don't want this. I don't want a lot of give, right? I want that to lock. I want this to, as soon as I set it, it locks. And then now everything is coming from this side. Okay, you may have to set it a little bit further or with a slightly bigger knee bend to get closer. But whatever you set it at, you lock it. So watch out for this. This kind of, and this. Watch out for the knee giving. Now, like I said, it's okay to bend the knee. You might want to go for a body shot, right, and get out. That's fine. You can do that. If you want to have power, whatever power you're trying to get, you set that knee angle. Here, same with here. I don't want this, right? I don't want, right? So I'm moving. I set that knee angle and I lock it. Same thing when you throw here with a hook, we're going to set the elbow angle. Okay, I'll talk about that in a second. All right, upper body. There's actually a couple here. So it's probably going to be like five things. On the hooks, especially on the hooks. With the straight punches, you got to just be loose and follow through. With the hooks, elbow angle. Whatever distance I need to hit the target, that's the elbow angle I want to set. I want to elbow angle. I want to set and I want to lock it at that. So when I go, I, and here's my distance, I'm turning, I'm setting this to hit the target. I want to lock in that elbow angle at whatever angle I need to get there. Even if the target is closer, I only have to set it here. Boom, all right? I don't want this to go from out to in. That's slapping. And even if a referee doesn't call you on slapping, that's slapping your technique. So I don't want this. See that? I don't want that. Okay? And I definitely don't want this. Right? I don't want it to go out further as well because then that's almost like a straight punch. Whatever I set it at here, I'm going to hit this target. Okay? I set as I'm turning my body, I'm setting that angle and now I bludgeon. Boom. I want to go straight through and hit solid with that hook. So no scooping, no changing the elbow angle as well. That's one thing that you're going to find is especially this way, long to short. You're going to see that a lot in the beginning because you're slapping. You want to get power. So you open up and then now you realize, oh crap, I got to throw a hook actually. And then you start bringing the hand in. No, set it as you're turning and it bludgeons. Okay. You got to lock in that elbow angle and you got to learn to keep it set. Number five, this is a little bit more of a physical one, your own body. When you turn and rotate to throw hooks, it's a lot of stress. It's a lot of pressure on the shoulder, especially on the front deltoid, on the bicep. It's suddenly like, boom. It's like a plyometric for the upper body. This shoulder will protect itself. These muscles will protect themselves and not allow you to get the full power that you need because they're scared that they're going to get ripped, that they're just going to get shredded apart from this. <clears throat> okay? So you have to condition these muscles to get used to the spring. And you always see this as a warm-up exercise, but it's more than just a warm-up. It's to give them little, give these front muscles some little plyos, you know? Give them a little bit of spring. Get them used to... Because <clears throat> as you go here and turn, this will stretch back. You see any fighter, you watch in slow-mo, a hook in slow motion. You're going to see that stretch. Bang! Okay, and come through. Goes under extreme stress for a few seconds. And if you're a beginner, you're not going to have that. So what you're going to end up doing is you're going to end up just scooping your hook. You're going to go here and scoop it. You're going to sort of front deltoid it, like shoulder it, when really it's a body rotation. Boom! Okay? But that body rotation puts a lot of stress on the shoulder and the bicep for that moment that it's stretched. Boom! And you're following through. So one thing you can do to train your arms, just work on these. Okay? Work on these. How many? You know, 20 or 30 every day. You know, just work on it a little bit. Work on it a little bit. All right? Maybe do a few sets of 20 or 30. That's what I like to do. Just open it up. Over time, it's happening over time for you. Slowly get these muscles used to that. 
explosiveness. They won't be used to it at first and you'll tend to just sort of, sort of push it, push your hook, or you'll be out wide like this, boom, swinging. Another thing as well, you see fighters leaning, right? Because their shoulder can't take it. So they actually use their body to pull the muscle into the punch. So get the shoulders used to it. You don't have to throw with power right away. You start just loose, rotate the body. And then once you're feeling good, then you add some power into your shot. All right, you guys, I hope that helps making sure that you don't leak out power, that you don't lose power. The exercises for punching power out there, they're good, they're good. Rotation, explosiveness, uh, application of force, rate of force development, it's all good stuff. But if you have faulty technique, it's all gonna be for nothing. All that power is gonna go out the door. You're gonna be trying so hard to get power and you'll be losing it because you don't have your feet and your body mechanics down. And most of that just comes from relaxing, right? Getting into your stance, relaxing, <clears throat> feeling it out, understanding the positions of boxing and really getting attuned to it and locking it in. Don't forget to check out the membership section on this channel. I have everything from my past live streams at level one, boxing drills and training, exclusive videos, workouts, instructional videos, that's at level two. If you are a beginner, the beginner boxers portal, I teach you everything from the ground up, every detail, and then we do workouts alongside that to develop you. That's like the ultimate beginner boxers training camp. Level four, boxing training camps. If you wanna get in shape and focus on a certain aspect of boxing, hand speed, footwork, head movement, defense and counter punching, full on training camps there that you can do. And at the highest level, if you want a review of your boxing, you can send me a video and I'll give you a review back on what to work on and what to improve. All right, you guys, thanks for watching. In the meantime, keep your hands up, chin down, eyes on the prize. Peace.